post about it on our YouTube channel. But until it's done, I'm not going to drive to Inglewood to go stare at a hole in the middle of the ground with some it beams. It ain't a hole up. in the ground. That's what it was three years ago. <laughs> Why I want to see a work in progress? Just show it to me when it's done. Just I like. That's like that's like that's like that's like your girlfriend being like, "Yo, I'm finna surprise you with a gift," and then she send you a picture of half the box and says, "Does this look like something you want, Cam?" And you like, just show just show me what it is. If that's the case, I'll get the present when it show up. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I I hear where you're coming from. So you talking about. Let's talk about the construction of this team, though. Um, they disrespect PG with the two years for 60. Um, How is me, that disrespect? I, I was don't on know my that, podcast I saying I that Clay that, Thompson deserved that. $5 million a year from the Magic. Now, I was joking, but Clay got what, 20 a year? Yeah, come on. No, Clay, wait, PG wait, 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 wait. This is a player wait, that wait, gave I'm up. I'm asking you a they, question. This Hold is a on. player Can I ask that you a they question? gave up a lot for. But so what? They're, they. Everybody gives up a lot for everybody. You pay the price that you want to get the thing you want. And they wanted him at that point in time. They thought they had a run, and they did have a run. The problem was is that they choked multiple times, and they were hurt multiple times. So we can just – that's just brass tacks. But my question is, so if Clay is worth right. 60 so why, million. Why did Kawhi get three years 150? Because if, if, if you're did saying you not you just hear that five-minute spiel I went on about I'm one of the best players in the world? I'm playing. Is you see Paul George on Team USA? Paul George doesn't have the two the two rings that Kawhi. No, la no. Wait a minute. Last I checked, Kawhi Leonard is a New Balance athlete, so we can't even blame the shoe companies. He is a New Balance athlete. I'm not blame. I'm not buying that. No, my point is. But we all know Kawhi Leonard, when healthy, is a top five basketball player. The problem is, is when healthy. When healthy, Paul George is a top 15, top 20, top 25 basketball player. You heard how many tops I went through down the list? Mm -hmm. Kawhi, top, maybe top five when he's healthy. Okay. The other okay. guy, 15, 20, 25. Clay was a borderline top 25, top 20 player most of his career. Now he's borderline top 30 to 30. Yeah. 45, maybe 50, maybe below. Oh, wow. You, oh, wow. You really no, just... my, my, my point is if PG is, is, is what, 33? Why 30. would I pay a guy that's barely better than Clay Thompson $200 million? Versus now, 200, guy 200 was a guy that's on the Olympic team. 200 was a bit much, but he can't, he's not. He wanted 50 a year. Why would I give you $50 in, in million the, dollars the, a year? You, <laughs> Cam, do you remember when we was, when we was watching Clippers, Suns, game six in Staples Center. And we were sitting in that little middle part where the hockey people do the announcing thing, watching that conference finals. And the first half was happening, and PG was like two or nine. I turned to you, Cam, and I said, the Clippers going to lose. You said, no, they're not going to lose. I said, PG is shooting like shit. They're about to lose. You yeah. said, well, yeah, the guys is hurt. And I said, I don't want to hear nothing about nobody hurt. He is shooting two of nine. They are at home right now. And he had less, I think he had like six points in the first half. You said, well, he'll still finish the game with 30. They're not going to win. I think he and they didn't win. They lost. Chris but... Paul celebrated on his home floor and then went to the finals. Okay. I, why does he need $60 million a year? 60 is why? a stretch. 60 is, is a stretch. But why does he need 50? So for all, all of that you the said. The Sixers overpaid for him. All, all, we'll see. They overpaid for him. Mm -hmm. Because they needed they they needed a better him to be better than Tobias Harris. So, so, so you go Harris, do what, what the Clippers did and get Tobias Harris heavy. If if he all he has to do is be better than Tobias Harris, really. Tobias Harris place. heavy is not get him yeah. to the finals. We'll see if if. If Embiid plays like he's been playing for the last couple of years and actually stays healthy later you mean, in the season, don't let's just leave that whole second part of that and that comma yeah. you put as you continue. I mean, that's, that's, that's he's never important. healthy. So okay. hobbled Embiid in the playoffs, well, second yeah. round. You no, got yeah. Tyrese Maxey, yeah, and then you look at Paul George and you say, "Hey, big fella, are you going to help get us to the conference finals and get us to the finals?" No, you know what he's going to say. Thank you for tuning into the podcast, <laughs> P Podcast, sponsored by FanDuel and DraftKings. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Podcast, Make sure you enter the podcast P code. <laughs> uh, <he brought> <laughs> and then he's going to go out there and shoot 
four of 16 from the field, give you 19 oh, points, three rebounds, and five assists. And then after the season, he's going to say, well, they awoke the bully this time. Right. Yeah, now, oh, now some of the podcast no. commentary is not it does not uh match reality. I'll give you I'll give you that. I don't I wouldn't say I would and I'm not saying that they should have gave him the, the uh 50 a year at the four years uh two two fourteen, two twelve that Philly gave him. I agree he didn't deserve that, but they could have matched the same contract. They brought him and Kawhi in together. If you're gonna continue the Kawhi and PG experience, they they're about the same level for whatever for their time at in Los Angeles, they are about the same level. Yes, obviously Kawhi has championships, but their time in Los Angeles with the Clippers, they've been about on the same level. Both of them had injuries at inopportune times. Both of them played really well when the other one wasn't there. They were about the same player. He does because Kawhi has rings, so you can't offer him the uh three years 153. So you maybe three years one. How, can I ask you a question? How do the words they're about the same player, and you say this man got two rings, and the other guy got none Spe- specifically for their time? And the guy was the best player on both teams, but he got for the rings. Their time and the other guy in Los none. Angeles for their time in Los Angeles, Kawhi they brought Leonard him was they way him better than him when years. he was healthy. I'm sorry, Cleavon. Can I ask you a question? Who's a better player right now, or who would you rather on your team, Laurie Markkinen or uh, Paul George? Oh, if I'm going long term, uh, it's not like a one year or two year thing. It's got to be marketing. Would you give Laurie marketing two hundred million dollars? No. What? Okay, so uh, enough of this conversation. Thank you for do- thank you for giving your your feedback on this. Um, do you see the plan of what the Clippers are doing though? Do you see? Yeah, like, save they, they money. Wanted to get, they wanted to get younger. They wanted to get younger and more athletic. But that save money? We're talking about we're not talking about Genie Bus. We're talking about Steve Ballmer. When is money been I don't, out? I don't it's, it's not a I don't think it's about saving money. I think they wanted to save money, but also it's not about saving money. Like what you gotta realize that the apron and when you and when you go above the the you know, you know, the tax second, threshold and the, the second, second no, no, no. Second. You go above the first and the second. There are there are real life repercussions that you have. Like you can't use your trade exceptions, you can't right. use certain mid level exceptions. You lose your draft picks, or you or you fall down to the thirtieth pick in the draft. So there are a lot of reasons as to why you don't want to continue to sell high, 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 high when you don't believe that what you have is a championship contender. And if one of the guys is going to be there in every uh, every year, and the other one is not going to be there, and you're only going to make it to the second round every year, anyways. You might as well bet on the guy that's a top five player when he's healthy, build around him, rest him up like you need to when you need to rest him up because you have a younger, more athletic team. They also are taller. Daniel Tice is six foot eight. Mo Bamba is seven feet tall. Mo Bamba also shoots a better uh, field goal percentage and a better three point percentage than Daniel Tice as well while being four inches taller than him. So you build off of getting more size, more rebounding. You try to eliminate Paul George from the culture because I do believe even being on, the, even being a Clippers supporter for the past five years and being there Paul George whole career, including in the presses when they win, when they lose, he always fucking smiling. What the fuck are you smiling for? You're not fucking winning. Stop fucking smiling. Stop smiling. Stop fucking smiling. <laughs> With so Kawhi okay, going so to post games, people can say what they want to him. But Kawhi going to shits he be. Kawhi, Kawhi, you had a really nice dunk in the first half, even though you all lost. Well, I mean, Kawhi, yeah. what did it feel like when you dunked the basketball? You were there, you saw it. <laughs> well, you know, I grabbed the ball. He threw the ball in the outlet. I caught it. I saw so the defender one there. I took two dribbles and I dunked it. But we lost, so it don't matter. Paul, you had that tremendous 360 windmill near the end of the game when you guys lost. What did you think about it? Man, I was really just trying to give my team some emotion, get us back in the game, get the guys feeling good, you know what I mean? But unfortunately, you know, the things don't always work out the way we want them to. But we're going to get back in the lab. We're going to work at it, you know, next year. You know, and we're going you know, you know, we to be back. We're going to be getting the ring. Yeah, but, Paul, what did you think about that uh, game-winning three you missed and the, and the two jumpers before that from the mid-range? Man, sometimes you really don't 
You, you don't make them all, but you know, hey, he's we always got next year. They awoke the bully. I'll be back next year. I'll be better. We will be better. You get the difference in them two answers? One guy's like, shut the fuck up talking to me. We just fucking lost. I don't want to talk to you. The other guy's like, let me make everybody feel better about me not showing up when I, when I needed to show up. And that's the crux of PG whole time here. And this is not nothing personal. I love PG. He's a nice guy. I'm going to continue to say hi to him. He is a sweet gentleman. Very kind. Speaks to everybody. Never disrespected anybody. Never done anything wrong. But if you want to talk about a leader or a dog, give me Clay Thompson any day of his career over PG. Oh. Because you know what Clay not going to go Whoa. out there and do when he know Kawhi hurt or Steph Curry hurt in that game six is go two or nine in the fucking first half and then get blown out on your home floor to not go to the finals. When the other guy has been rehabbing for months off of this knee injury and they saying if y'all make the finals, he going to come back. And you can't even perform in game six. And then you get up there and you make these excuses and you act like people are fucking bullying you when you play terribly and you don't show up. And then you say, oh, they don't play me. They didn't pay Clay Thompson because he didn't fucking show up. So why do you need $200 million, Paul George? Oh you were You're never there when they needed you. You're making fans today, boy. I'm hot. I'm finna go turn my AC on. But like this shit makes me so mad. Look at this PG shit. It's like, shut up. Well, I want okay, the same look, money as look Kawhi. At this, look at this well, roster. Kawhi kind of equal. Listen, listen, no, listen, you're listen. You're not equal listen, to listen. Kawhi, Paul. Oh listen to this. So Derrick Jones, Kevin Porter Jr., Nick Batum, Chris Dunn. That's an adequate replacement? That's Chris Dunn, Nick Batum, Kevin Porter Jr., Derrick Jones, and James Harden. That's, that's adequate replacement? I think that's tremendous. I think you lost nothing. I think you gained size in the front court. You gained size on the perimeter. You gained uh, ball handling. Hey, you and have, Wait, you, you asked me a question. I'm giving you the answer. You gained perimeter playmaking and perimeter defense. Bones Highland could literally not play at all. So you really had one point guard and a bunch of shooting guards and wings. And that by proxy made Paul George the point guard. And when he go cold, which he always inevitably does, the ball stopped moving because he can't make a shot. So he stopped passing the ball. So you actually having a guy like Chris Dunn in the wings, you letting go of a guy like Russell Westbrook, which is like high motor but very up and down. And even with some of these young guys, like I think Russ did his job last year. And that was to motivate the young guys and show them that there were opportunities that they could grasp if they just played hard. And I even think a guy like your favorite pair, I'm sorry, player Terrence Mann, Learned a lot from Russ where a lot of the times you don't need to make shots as long as you have energy. And that's the reason why man stayed on the floor a lot of the times when he wasn't making shots because it was nonstop energy, pace, tenacity. He rebounded and he, and he did make clutch shots when they needed him to. So this year, I just think that they're going more trying to lean on slashing and playmaking and rebounding. Like last year, they were not a good rebounding team. But they got all these big wings, but you can't get a rebound. Like, why is Paul George six foot fucking nine averaging six rebounds a game? But yeah, you want two hundred million dollars. He's more. He's more. So you you expect anything from Porter Jr. Kevin Porter Jr. I expect him to stay out of trouble. Well, hopefully he has some influence now. People on now. Hopefully he would put Ty Lue. Ty Lue can coach him up and teach him how to be a man and give him that fatherly advice and, and leadership that he's been lacking. Cleveland, Cleveland already yeah. shaking. Come on, what you got? Ty, Ty Lue, look. No, he's he's a he's a grown ass man. Uh, I'm lit on the scene. I see been, these young guys shown, out. Shown at, at multiple stops that uh, he can't be depended upon to be responsible. It's just not his thing. So at some point, there's going to be a, a run in an altercation, um, and he's going to be a problem. He's he's a malcontent. He's not wired. He's you know chemically imbalanced. Oh in my goodness! This cat with the chemical so imbalance. He's chemically imbalanced in certain oh. ways, and so uh, being in LA is not going to be a, a positive thing. There's just too many uh, distractions and things to get into. Um, and Ty Lu is used to coaching uh, professionals, and he to this point has not proven to be a professional. So I don't think that that's a that's a, a great addition to that, um, but. Back to the, the original point, there's something that, that that's being missed here is that the experiment failed, but rather than 
uh, get rid of them both, they decided to keep the player that they got initially and get rid of the sidekick. And so oh my that, just puts, that just puts more pressure they on They never – I don't – but I, they yeah, never wanted PG. He will never play a full season ever again. So, I mean, he can't even play in the Olympics. So – I mean that's not a bad thing. He shouldn't have been. He shouldn't have been in Las Vegas anyway. Except the do the I detect a Spurs fan here? No, no. Okay, no. all right. I just wanted to make sure Cleavon wasn't like an undercover Spurs fan who was mad that Kawhi left. Oh no, 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 no! I I, I thought it was hilarious that Kawhi decided that he didn't want to be a Laker and that he wanted to go and do his own thing. But in order to go and do his own thing, you have to go get me my hand picked player that I want, and if you don't go and get him, I'm not coming to your team. Okay, well, what does that take? Well, that takes Shea and four first-round picks. Okay. For yeah, you, so Kawhi, so we'll to be Kawhi fair, I don't, I don't think off, Shea would have been as good if Kawhi was on the team. your championship and your NBA championship MVP, right? Yeah, most teams, most GMs in the league would have made that move. Okay, but at, what, but at what point do you realize that, that that experiment didn't work and why didn't they get rid of both of them? It, because Kawhi is yeah, never because gonna, you're opening a new stadium. Area. You have a new stadium. You can't get rid of a top five basketball player when you're opening a brand new billion dollar stadium that you pay cash to make. Okay, so we, we, I mean, the, the, you guys, the, you guys, I'm cutting off all this Clipper bashing right now. I'm cutting it off early, but I want to know. I want to set T, uh, Thomas off with this one. What do you expect from Bronny? Y'all have a good night. Um, I really enjoy being on y'all podcast episode well, number three hundred. You, you, you all are you the talk. titans of the H and B channel. <laughs> you all have been loyal, he consistent. You have been here every single week. I don't have you all taken a week off. I don't think I've taken a week off. He um, don't even so want to talk to about know, it. I think I think y'all started on what around like episode seventy or something on the channel. So to think that it's been like 230 plus episodes um, and you all have made it this far and accomplished so much just shows that, you know, that's what happens when you actually work for something um, and you put in the time and the dedication and the hard work to get there and things aren't just handed to you. Um, and I think that, you know, it's going to be amazing. I look forward to seeing y'all when y'all, uh, uh, you know, up to episode number 500. Um, and you're accomplished because of the work that you do and not because your dad wants you to have a podcast. So, you know, I think that you all, and it's a testament to the work that you've done and you put in and <laughs> no, I'm for real. No, I'm for real. Like it takes a lot of heart and a lot of dedication oh my goodness. to really put forth the time to want to be great at being a podcaster and to show up every single week and do it over and over and over and over and over again and do it at a high level. Um, you know, it's a lot of mediocre podcasters that have done a lot of mediocre podcasts and got signed, but I give you all a lot of credit for just like really putting in the work and like focusing and even Cam, like Cam get on my nerves a lot of times, but he's always asking for things that are moving the podcast forward and the momentum of it. So I love that. Um, you know, that shows me that he's a real student of the game. And that's the one thing that I do like about Cam, like even him going back to school to learn the, you know, how all of this works and it fits together and it puts together in the scheme. Like to me, that shows a real level of dedication for you to go back to school when you could have just kept going forward and doing the same thing, even though you weren't that great, you went and you learned and you got better. And that's the really valuable thing. And that's the thing that like will always have you as a part of my team and not just because like you cool or you somebody's son or something like that. Like, and I appreciate Cleavon because, you know, Cleavon is just a, 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 a great guy. It seems like he's a great guy. Cleavon, I'm sorry. I still have not finished your book, but I will finish your book. I promise. But, I started it. I've started. I've, I read it, but I have to finish it. Phenomenal book. You all need to go buy it when it drops. They are more than podcasters, more than sports reporters. These guys are legends. I love them. Thank you all so much for your time. And no, I do not want to talk about somebody's son <laughs> who is irrelevant. Let the people let the people know where they can find you, Thomas. Thanks for tuning in. Find me here on H and B Media TV. That's youtube.com slash HB Media TV. You can also find me at uh at Hoops in Brews on Twitter, as well as at H and B Media TV on Twitter. Make sure if you are listening to this and you've been watching this and you haven't dropped a like, a comment, a subscribe, you have